It's a simple question. Whiteouts or... Whiteouts or blackouts, which do you prefer? What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the New Balance Tequila 1.0 Pro in the two variations of the black and white pack. Of course, the blackout variation, which looks like this, all black, and the whiteout variation, which looks like this. Yes, they will get dirty easily for those that will ask. You know who you are. Now the tequila came out just in time for the 2018 World Cup and the first colorway was a limited edition release with the $250 retail price, which was quite simply way too much money even though the boots were really good, these new colorways are now only $200, which of course is still expensive, but it's on par with most other top end models, cheaper than a lot from Nike and Adidas. So with that in mind, what I wanna talk about in today's video is why I think the Tequila 1.0 Pro is one of the best new boots of 2018. And I'm gonna be very generous with the comparison that I make here, and that this is probably the closest thing to a well broken in Nike Hypervenom Phantom 1, which is a lot of people's all time favorite boot. They're not quite exactly the same, but I'm gonna explain why I think they're similar in today's video. And we're also gonna take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you wanna learn more about these guys, please stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair for yourself, you can click the little pop up in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive sr for you coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price in white or black or any of the other currently available colorways. If you guys do end up enjoying the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. Included with the boots is a red New Balance box. Also included with the boots is a boot bag that does have some strings at the top to basically seal the top of the bag. It's black and white in color with the New Balance football logo there. Honestly, the quality of the bag is nothing special. And of course, this is two separate pairs. The blackout pair comes with this bag and the whiteout pair comes with the exact same bag. So my string bag rating for this one is a five out of 10 and my string bag rating for this one is a 50 out of 100 and one. As far as looks are concerned, I really like the overall silhouette of the tequila. I think the shape of the collar and the extension on the tongue, while I don't think it's necessary, it does look quite cool. And obviously this particular pack, a whiteout and a blackout, very, very straightforward as far as colors go. All white, I always think looks super, super clean. And given the choice between these two, as much as I love blackout boots, something about whiteouts just really does it for me, even if they're gonna get dirty super quick, which they will. A lot of you guys always point out these back here, which they're not broken, nothing's wrong with them. They've just been worn a couple of times and as you can see, they get very, very dirty and are next to impossible to clean. So if you don't like dirty boots, I would probably not buy the whiteout ones. That's why they make the blackouts though. And the blackouts are gonna look great pretty much no matter what. Yes, they're gonna show brown dirt marks, but they won't show grass stains and they'll be relatively easy to clean off. Also, unlike the World Cup colorway release, these do not have wearable sole plates. The black sole plate will remain black and the white sole plate will probably stain greenish yellow over time, but that is to be expected. Let me know which one you guys prefer down below in the comments and what you think of the overall looks of the Tequila in general. Now you might be wondering why I think the Tequila 1.0 Pro compares so closely to the beloved Nike Hypervenom Phantom 1, a boot that to a lot of people is one of the best Nike boots of all time. What's so great about the Phantom 1 is that it had this original Nike skin upper, this mesh based synthetic with a thin poly urethane top layer. It's soft, it's flexible, and as you wore them in, they actually stretched to the shape of your feet. It had that leather-like characteristic to it, soft, comfortable, great touch on the ball, flawed in a lot of ways and that it did have a sloppy fit. They did tend to overstretch. They weren't particularly durable and obviously not very responsive either, but the Tequila 1.0 Pro shares a lot of those characteristics, but actually improves upon the overall responsiveness and doesn't overstretch like we found with the Phantom 1. Now, what this upper is made up is two main elements. You're gonna find a microfiber synthetic base and then the kinetic stitching running throughout the entire upper. That kinetic stitching is there for the sake of added structure, but it still allows for a super, super soft feel. This is one of the softest uppers you'll find out of the box as far as synthetics go. 
and it's not a knitted upper, which I think a lot of people maybe are surprised that New Balance haven't done a knitted upper yet. I'm kind of surprised myself, but honestly, this material feels absolutely fantastic. It has the broken in Nike skin feel right out of the box, which I think a lot of people who were fans of the Phantom 1 will immediately like about the Tekela 1.0 Pro. Being that the upper is so soft, you're probably wondering how thick it is. And really, I would say that this is on the thinner side as far as touch is concerned, not really a true barefoot feel, because it does have a little bit of a padded sensation to it. But again, that's where it kind of compares more closely to the Phantom 1 in that it's soft and flexible, also thin, but has that slight bit of a padded feel, which I think a lot of people really, really like, including myself. Also kind of like the Phantoms is that you get this extra grip on the surface of the upper by way of this silicone coating that is on top of all the kinetic stitching exposed on the surface of the upper over top of the microfiber. It gives you a little bit of texturing and also adds, like I said, that little bit of added grip on the ball that you wouldn't otherwise have. Kind of similar to that waxy finish that we had on the Phantom 1. I love that about this particular boot. The upper also features a one-piece construction and because of the added structure by way of this kinetic stitching, the lacing system is actually quite shallow, meaning that you have a lot of open surface area across the top of the foot, just have a very clean touch on the ball, which I would say is immediately noticeable once you start playing in these things. Now the one-piece upper is enclosed by what is kind of like a neoprene type material, but a very structured, high quality feeling neoprene with these padded inserts running through the middle to help cut down on lace bite and just improve comfort overall. I like that little added bit. You're gonna find that the lacing system is kind of unusual and that it does use a dual lace hole setup, which is not weird at all, but the lace holes are kind of side by side rather than staggered a little bit. Doesn't really make for any difference once you actually tie the boots up. It just kind of looks a little bit strange in my opinion, but does overall work quite well. Again, it's not the most responsive boot in the world. Yes, this kinetic stitching is adding structure, but the upper still has has that little bit of, I guess, play to it in regards to when you're pushing off. So it's not gonna provide that mercurial-esque locked-in sensation if that's what you're looking for. Again, it's kind of more like those Phantom Ones, which had not necessarily a sloppiness to it, but it's not a super responsive boot either. It just kind of depends on what type of feel you like, obviously. As far as the cut is concerned, I would say that this is a low cut shoe. It has a little bit of an extension piece and the inside of these kind of neoprene extension pieces do have this little bit of a silicone grippiness to them. That seems like it would be super noticeable, but honestly, you don't notice it at all when you're actually playing in the boots. And then as far as the heel liner is concerned, I usually don't like these overly structured heel liners, but I actually really like what they've done here. It works quite well. You're gonna find that it has uh, a thin kind of mesh material as a lining, a little bit of padding at the very back, but then these two very large kind of ankle bumps on either side to help hold your heel in place. Kind of reminiscent of what we see right now from the Adidas X18.1 and X18 Plus models. It works really well. It's super, super comfortable. And there's pretty much no break in time because of this design. The insoles are of course fully removable and pretty straightforward in all honesty. It's a standard mesh liner on top and it's made from a single layer of ortholite foam. That's actually decent quality, a little bit of a pattern going on there. But for the most part, they're gonna feel like most other insoles in top end boots. As far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned, there's nothing too crazy going on here, but honestly, I think what they have works quite well. The sole plate is a standard TPU plastic material with some decent thickness to it. It's very, very flexible, which I think works with this particular style of boot. Something about the Phantom 1 that I wasn't a huge fan of is that the sole plate was on the stiffer side. Some some people really like that, but I felt that the upper was so flexible that the sole plate should have been more flexible as well. The upper and sole plate, I think, just match better on this particular boot, being that they're both soft and just feel very natural. It still has proper rigidity through the midfoot and heel area as you would want. And then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, it's a more traditional layout in regards to how it feels. So if you're looking for super aggressive traction, you're not necessarily going to get it here from this FG stud pattern, which is designed for use on natural grass. The only quirk of this is that you're going to find that it does have a little bit of kind of a toe pick here at the very lip of the front of the sole plate. Something that again, I don't really think is going to make for any difference in regards to traction overall. And really this feels kind of like old school tempo as far as traction is concerned, if you're familiar with that. Again, not overly aggressive, but I don't think you were expecting that anyways. And then there's the weight, which I think to a lot of people is going to be the biggest negative of the Tekela 1.0 Pro. 
In a size 9.5 US, these guys weigh in at right around nine ounces, which is by no means heavy, but it's not exceptionally lightweight either. Again, I compared these a lot to the Hypervenom Phantom 1 from Nike. Those are basically an ounce and a half to two ounces lighter than the Takela 1.0 Pro in the same size. Is that a big deal? To some people, yes. To some people, no. I really appreciate the comfort, the solid feel, and really the natural sensation that you get from the Tequila 1.0 Pro. Do they feel super light on your feet? No, but that's personally not a big thing for me. If it's a big thing for you, maybe it's better to go for something lighter. If weight is not a problem, you're really gonna enjoy the experience of wearing these. Now, of course, these are whiteouts and blackouts, and you kind of want to keep them that way to a certain extent, but I can't help myself, so I've swapped out the stock black laces on the blackout pair for some junior length black reflective SR4U replacement laces. Junior length, because they're pretty much the same length as the stock laces that come in the boots, mainly because this does have a fairly shallow lacing system. They're still black, so it matches the theme of the colorway. Plus you get the reflective bits, which doesn't take away from the blackout theme, but just makes them that much more unique and adds that little bit of flair. I like the look of reflective laces in general. If you are interested in some replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, the Tequila 1.0 Pro is legitimately one of the most comfortable boots out of the box currently on the market. It's one of very few products that when you put them on and wear them for even several sessions, they're still gonna feel exactly the same as they did from when they were brand new. There's legitimately nothing to break in. They really do have that soft kind of padded sock sensation to them. Very, very comfortable if that's a priority for you. This is one of the most comfortable synthetic boots on the market right now, in my opinion. As far as the overall fit and width is concerned, they definitely have some decent width to them, and this is the regular width variation. They make this boot in a regular as well as a wide fit. So I think the regular width is gonna be suitable for most people. They definitely have some decent width to them. Even if you have wide feet, I think the regular width version will fit you. But if you have super, super wide feet, I would probably check out the wide fit version. I've personally never tried them, but I can only assume that they are wider than these ones right here, which are decently wide as it is. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size nine and a half US and the fit and length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, I have some pretty strong opinions on the Tequila 1.0 Pro. One, I think it's one of the best new boots of 2018. Two, I think it's probably the most underrated top end boot on the market right now. And three, for those that have watched my channel for years now, you know that I have not been a huge fan of New Balance boots as a whole. I'll go as far as to say that over the last couple of years, I think that they have legitimately produced some of the worst top end products that money can buy. The original New Balance Furon 1.0, Honestly, I feel like that boot was borderline unwe unwearable, and the Vizarro 2 that this replaces was another stinker to say the least. These, however, have nothing in common with what New Balance has done up until this point, and I think this proves that New Balance does deserve to be in the football boot market because they do know what they're doing. It just took them a couple of tries to get there. So if you're looking for something different, if you're looking for something comfortable, if you were a fan of the Nike Hypervenom Phantom 1, while these aren't exactly the same, it's the closest thing to those that you can buy right now and they're definitely worth your time and money. Anyways, guys, that is it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in either the blackout, the whiteout, or any of the other colorways of the Tequila 1.0 Pro, you you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. we will be able to pick these up below their normal $200 retail price. And even those ones that came out during the World's Cup for 250, those are on sale deeply discounted as well. So be sure to check it out if you're interested in a pair. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.